The work of Arts Nexus has been an essential component in assisting the productivity and sustainability of the arts in far north Queensland, working with the economic plans of the region and support of the creative community to grow their business capabilities. We have established a cultural tourism destination hub that promotes the culture, arts and environmental groups and practitioners, a successful shop online and the promotions of hundreds of locally made products. The arts sector of Far North Queensland now represents all art forms. When Arts Nexus was pushed to the brink and not successful in securing operational funds, the arts sector was like a boat without a rudder. Desperate for support and without a one-stop shop where they could go to have a conversation for support. We stayed on everyone's radar and became the place to go to. In 2030, Arts Nexus is still considered to be the model of engagement and our programs are seen to be the most effective way to build capacity. In regional settings, it can be challenging to engage with the national network dedicate time to spend with other high profile arts leaders and discuss global challenges, evaluate, you know, evaluate vision, visionary solutions uh, that would be appropriate to your local creative community. Um, where you are now, it seems to be very much about strongly advocating for, for the arts in this region. Very much appreciated. An umbrella kind of organisation that can help to support that kind of stuff is incredible um, and such an amazing one for the region because it is a really diverse and interesting region. And you have always be so supportive and encouraging of what we do, so that is so invaluable to us too. 2030 will be a vibrant, energetic, amazing cultural place, and we will still be strong in our culture, true to our history, and hopeful for our future and our children. A theatre company in far north Queensland is trying to knock down the barriers to enjoying the arts with a uniquely inclusive production of a Shakespearean classic. Support services, volunteers and sign language interpreters have pitched in to help actors with disabilities experience the joy of performing. Shani Kim reports. The line from Shakespeare, all the world's a stage, but too often people with disabilities don't get the opportunity to shine not here at Tropical Arts. You know, and the first time I sort of saw it, you know, everyone was equal here and it was amazing. In real life you can't really change much about yourself. There's a limit to it. Um, but on the stage I just felt powerful than I actually am in real life. And the local deaf community who rehearse and perform with support from Auslan interpreters. It's proved with some thought and a few tweaks anyone can be involved so everyone can enjoy the arts. The whole thing about being human is a, is a search for belonging and uh, connecting. As you know we've just won the 2030 UNESCO Prize for Public Health and Participation. 11 years on since uh, Avril Duck and myself first wrote the evaluation, the capacity to use storytelling as a healing tool to include the power of bringing people together, the beauty of having 60, 70 people in a community show. There's some really beautiful common practices. We started using technology to communicate more clearly. We've got these amazing translator machines so that if we're supporting the deaf to hear sound and particularly music, what can't you do with technology when implied making it a tool for connection and, and belonging? We've, we've stopped weaponizing these extraordinary advances. Back in the Early 2000s, Donna Haraway wrote the Cyborg Manifesto. The challenge went out, would you work with augmented humans? And I said, well, we've been working with people with hearing aids for years. Why, why wouldn't you? The need, real connection is huge. We now have a wealth of understanding around neuroscience and the capacity for the brain to change itself is to see the young people that we've been training up through our disability services actually really take the helm. Oh, could the minister say that Australia is at the forefront of blockchain implementation. No. What if he was wearing a hard hat? What we categorically know is that despite all the technological advancements, the globalisation of our systems and supply chains, blockchains and Bitcoin currency, people are people and will always want to connect, create and communicate. If we're not all post-World War III in 2030, and that's a big if, 
What will we see? Them audiences for tours of the heritage forms of symphony, opera, ballet have collapsed. In fact, people in regional cities rarely leave home due to traffic congestion and pollution. They seldom mix with neighbours and the front door is only for parcel delivery. We are low carbon footprint community producers rather than consumers. Working from home has made this necessary, but highly productive and creative due to technological change, AI and the internet. Despite laws intended to stop it, facial recognition and surveillance has become a site of the irrepressible flowering of resistance and cultural democracy. With innovative protest signs, flashing solar pan powered banners, masks and costumes, a pageantry of colourful light shows and projections. These spectacles are all directed at going viral for distribution across online communities and a global audience. The local of regional Queensland creativity, thus shared, becomes global. As a valued contributor to the national agenda and participating in all levels of government consultations, ArtsNexus has a continual presence in all regional decisions. The key has been people working collegially and collaboratively to increase how the community values arts and culture.